Welcome to Islamophobia for Dummies. The step-by-step -step guide to seeing how ridiculous Islamophobia really is. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My name is Muhammad. Thank you for joining us. Today we'll be examining some of the prejudice comments made by Bill O'Reilly and some of his friends on Fox News. We'll be exposing the prejudice comments against Muslims which Fox News considers to be free speech with the help of our own fake news channel called Fox Fatwas where prejudice against Americans is surely to be considered hate speech. Now this story to give you a little bit of background about the first clip there was in December 2009 there was a project called the Cordoba House which is a Muslim community center in lower Manhattan and it got a lot of support from the New York communities uh, religious leaders even Fox News's Laura Ingram thought it was a great idea before she changed her mind uh, many months later and thought it was a terrible idea so it didn't take long for the Islamophobes namely Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer to misname the project which is called the Cordoba House and they decided to call it the Ground Zero Mosque uh, to associate it with something bad and drum up hatred about Muslims. Now uh, Fox News loved this idea of associating a Muslim mosque with the events of 9-11 and here's Bill O'Reilly being interviewed on The View. The mosque, the mosque down here on 9-11. That's inappropriate. It's it's sure they have a right to do it, and and in the Constitution, but it's inappropriate. What's really inappropriate is two things. First, Bill O'Reilly is misleading people about the actual location of this project when he says it's on 9/11. It isn't. It's two full city blocks away from the World Trade Center complex, and second. He's complaining about the building of this community center without even realizing that the site is, was already in use as a mosque. The Pentagon has a mosque in it. We never had a problem there either. Uh, so then Whoopi Goldberg tries to explain to Bill O'Reilly that there were also Muslim victims of the 9-11 attacks. And there were 70 families who are Muslim uh, who do also died in that building. Yeah. Not only that, Muslims were also among the first responders. And putting that aside, even if there were a few wacko Muslims that were involved in 9-11, most importantly, you still can't blame Islam because both the Quran and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself, explicitly forbid harming any civilians. But Bill O'Reilly still wants to link the terrorist acts of 9-11 with the Muslim mosque. It's inappropriate. Muslims didn't kill us on 9-11? Okay, so he's objecting to the building of any mosque anywhere near the World Trade Center because he thinks that Muslims are responsible. But as Whoopi Goldberg tried to explain to him, Muslims were also killed on 9-11. All right, now let's turn to our own uh, fake news channel, Fox Fatwas, to see what Ayatollah O'Reilly would think if there was a church being built in Baghdad or Kabul, which of course are the ground zero for Afghanis and Iraqis. It's inappropriate. Why is it inappropriate? Americans killed this in Afghanistan and Iraq. Americans didn't kill us in Afghanistan and Iraq. Is that what you say? So Americans didn't kill hundreds of thousands of Muslim civilians in Afghanistan and Iraq? Sure they did. But if some TV station said something like that as an objection to a church being built there, they'd be calling them Christianophobic, Americophobic, you know, terrorist sympathizers. Um, now, if someone were to wrongly blame all Americans uh, for these hundreds of thousands 
of Muslim civilian deaths in Afghanistan and Iraq, that would still make more sense than blaming Islam for 9-11. Because the invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan had the support of the US Congress and US public opinion. Whereas the 9-11 attacks and all terrorist acts are, are unequivocally condemned by Islamic scholars before and after 9-11. So you can't blame Muslims for 9-11 in the same way you can't blame Christians for the thousands of pedophile priests and in the same way you can't blame Christians for the Crusades even though they were endorsed by six Catholic popes. In all these cases the violations in question are in, are in contradiction with the religious doctrine. So back to the prejudice comment and double standards of Bill O'Reilly, Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg were rightly outraged and walked out of the interview. And the next day, Bill O'Reilly's friend on Fox News, Brian Kilmeade, decides to come to defend Bill O'Reilly and actually just makes things even worse. That was our debate seven weeks ago, sure. and they can't handle the give and take of a debate. They were outraged that somebody was saying uh, there's a reason there was a certain group of people that attacked us on 9-11. It wasn't just, just one person, it was mm -hmm. one religion. Not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslims. And here he is again on a radio show that same day. Not every Muslim's an extremist, a terrorist, but every terrorist is a Muslim. You can't avoid that fact. And that is ridiculous that we got to keep defining this. Now what's ridiculous to me is that when he says all terrorists are Muslim, he's excluding a few groups like the Hindu Christian Tamil Tigers, the Irish Republican Army, the Christian abortion clinic bombers, Timothy McVeigh, the atheist Unabomber, and the list of, of terrorist organizations is, is quite long. Um, it's also interesting how uh, America only considers people to be terrorists when the atrocities are against them. They, you know, Israel commits atrocities every day against Palestinians. They're not considered a terrorist organization. The Crusaders, you know, those are against Muslims, so that's okay, that's not terrorism. And of course, the U.S. shock and awe invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan, which terrorized the entire Iraqi and Afghani populations. So let's see what our own uh, Fox Fatwa's brother Kilmeade would have to say about this. Not all Americans are so terrorists, but all terrorists are American. See that? These are two equally untrue statements. And not all invading armies are American either. And not all occupying forces in modern history are American either. Most of them, sure, but not all of them. There must be a couple extra. Uh, now let's look at a few true statements. Not all Christians are abortion clinic bombers, but all abortion clinic bombers are Christian. Not all Christians are pedophile priests, but all pedophile priests are Christian. And let's not forget our, our friends, the atheists, who aren't all communists, but by definition, all communists are atheists. Then Juan Williams was being interviewed on Bill O'Reilly's show and again tried to defend uh, Bill O'Reilly. So where am I going wrong there, Juan? Well, actually, uh, I hate to say this to you because I don't want to get your ego going, but I think you're right. I think, look, political correctness can lead to some kind of paralysis where you don't address reality. I mean, look, Bill, I'm not a bigot. You know the kind of books I've written about the civil rights movement in this country. But when I get on a plane, I got to tell you, if I see people who are in Muslim garb, and I think, you know, they're identifying themselves first and foremost as Muslims, I get worried. I get nervous. Yeah, he's not a bigot. He just gets nervous when he sees someone wearing Muslim clothing on a plane. Just like I get nervous whenever I see someone wearing a yarmulke. He could be in the Jewish Defense League, which the FBI considers to be a terrorist organization. And just like I get nervous every time I see somebody wearing a cross, he could be in the KKK for all I know.
If one Williams is right to get nervous every time he sees a Muslim who, quote, identifies himself first and foremost as a Muslim, then everyone also has a right to get nervous every time we see someone identifying themselves first and foremost as a Jew, a Christian, or an atheist, because they're just as likely to be a terrorist. And that reminds me of something else that Brian Kilmeade said. Americans have a right to look at moderate Muslims and say, show me you're not one of them. Yes. And everyone has a right to go up to moderate white people and say, show me you're not a white supremacist. And go up to moderate Christians and say, show me you're not a pedophile priest. Show me you're not a crusader. How do I know? You're not going to invade my country next. Now back to the interview with Juan Williams and Bill O'Reilly. And, and when you said in the Talking Points memo a moment ago that there are good Muslims, I think that's a point. You know, it's, but everybody you don't knows be, that, Juan. No, I mean, no, no. what are we, in because, third grade here or what? No, you don't. But you've got to be careful. This is what Barbara Walters was saying. i got to be careful. With. You just said it. i got to be careful. Listen, yeah, I have because, to qualify everything 50 times. You know what, no, Juan? I'm not no. doing that anymore. See that? Bill O'Reilly's not prejudiced. He even said there are good Muslims. They exist. Imagine they actually exist. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, but he doesn't want to have to keep saying it over and over again. Just like I'm sure there must be some good Americans out there. There might even be some good Christians out there. How many? I don't know. How do you find them? I don't know. But they surely exist. Now, the funny thing to me is how Juan Williams was fired from National Public Radio for his bigoted comments. And guess who gives him a three-year, $2 million contract that same week? Fox News. I guess there's a lot of good money to be made out there with Fox News if you have a certain way with words. Uh, anyway, the same issue pops up again recently in April 2011 when Donald Trump was being interviewed by Bill O'Reilly. You saw me on The View with the ladies walking out? Yes, okay. I did. But they didn't walk out on you when you no, brought up didn't. the birth certificate no, when they, they should didn't. have. Uh, that was worse than what I did. Is there a Muslim problem in the world? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Bill, the way 1.5 billion Muslims see it is that we really have an American problem in the world. And the way that most countries on Earth, excluding Israel and America, of course, uh, would see it, is that there's really an American foreign policy problem in the world. Uh, and as for Donald Trump, we're not going to answer his bigoted comments because that would really need an entire episode. Um, and this last clip we're going to look at is from Bill O'Reilly back in November 2009. But let me play devil's advocate here. Barack Obama wants, well. wants to win hearts and minds in the Middle East, in, in, in the uh, Muslim world, which is a good thing. I, and you know that. As, as a soldier, we can't kill all the Muslims. So we, we want to we win as many hearts and minds of good, moderate Muslims as we can. You know, it's not that he doesn't want to kill all Muslims. He'd like to. He'd like to try. But all of them killing all the Muslims, it's just, you know, impractical. So we have to be... Uh, nice to them, some of them. Uh, how do, does a guy like this still have a job on a news channel? I do not understand. Can you imagine if our Fox Fatwas, Ayatollah O'Reilly, said something like that? As a soldier, we can't kill all Americans. So we, we want to we win as many hearts and minds of good, moderate Americans as we can. If any Muslim had said something like that, that we can't kill all the Americans. He'd be on the 10 most wanted list, you know, terrorist watch list, no fly list, and everyone would be pointing the finger, you know, Islam, look at Islam, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but because he's an American Christian, it's free speech. It's not hate speech. Both the Quran and the Bible teach tolerance. The Quran says, do not let hatred of any people make you deviate and deal unjustly. And the Bible tells Christians to love their enemies. Now, are there, you know, cases of bigoted Muslims out there? Sure, they're violating Islam. 
Are there cases of bigoted Christians out there? Sure, they're violating the teachings of the Messiah Jesus. And I'm definitely not feeling any love from Bill O'Reilly or Fox News. But the difference is that Muslims don't give our bigots their own 24-hour you know, news channels. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islamophobia for Dummies. And we hope to see you again next time.